Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about breast cancer recurrence. What is it? What kinds are there? What does it mean? And what are your treatment options? Breast cancer recurrence generally means that the tumor has come back either in the area where the breast cancer was originally, even if you've had a mastectomy or removal of the whole breast. And recurrence can also refer to breast cancer cells that have come back in other parts of the body. Common places are liver, lung, and bone. First, I'm going to talk about breast cancer recurrence that is local or regional. Local or regional, or sometimes lumped together and called local regional recurrence, means that the cancer that was originally removed comes back in the area of the tumor itself, or in the breast or chest wall, or in the lymph nodes. Even if those lymph nodes were removed, we still have lymph nodes left, and cancer can come back in those lymph nodes. If you've been found to have a local regional cancer recurrence, it's very likely that your medical team will recommend that we look to see if there are cells elsewhere in the body. Now, just because we don't see them doesn't mean that they aren't there. So sometimes we will treat people as if the cancer may be in other parts of the body. What kinds of tests would you have if you've been diagnosed with a local regional or local regional breast cancer recurrence. Well, depending on the kind of recurrence it is, it's possible your medical team will recommend that we do tests to see if the cancer is visible in other parts of the body. The parts of the body that we look at include the bones and also the organs in our chest and abdomen. So we'll often do a PET CT scan or a bone scan or just a CT scan of the chest and abdomen. Most people don't need scans of the pelvis. There are a few exceptions. I'm going to finish talking about local regional recurrence as if all those other tests were negative, and I'll get to what it means if those tests are positive next. If all the tests show that the disease, the breast cancer recurrence, is just in the breast or area where the breast was, or in the lymph nodes of the region, and that generally refers, refers to the area under the armpit or near the clavicle or collarbone, then we will treat you as if we can cure you. The goal of treatment with a local regional recurrence is cure. This means that surgery, radiation therapy, and even chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and hormonal therapy will be recommended to you. If you're already on hormonal therapy, we will generally stop the medicine that you're on and switch you to another hormonal therapy. The exception would be is if you haven't been able to take your hormonal therapy for some reason, side effects, costs, or you didn't know how important it was, tell your medical team because we can start that exact same medicine depending on how long it's been that you haven't taken it. If you want to learn more about treatment options for local, regional, or local, regional breast cancer recurrence, visit yerba.com. Next, I'm going to talk about distant recurrence. Distant recurrence, or metastatic recurrence, means that the cancer cells that were originally in the breast are now visible in other parts of the body. How did they get there? Before your breast cancer was even operated on, Cells from the primary tumor, from that first tumor, spread through your body, either through the bloodstream or for, through a system called the lymphatic system, and then set up shop or settled into those other organs. That requires that those cells left the primary tumor, spread, and then established a home in the liver, lungs, or bone, for example, established their own blood supply, and then grew to be big enough for us to be able to see them on a scan or sometimes even on physical exam. How do we know this is breast cancer? That's a really good question. We know it's breast cancer because we will, whenever possible, do a biopsy of that distant site. So if the cancer is now seen in the liver, lung, bone, 
or in a lymph node far away from the primary tumor, we will try to do a biopsy. Why do we do this? Well, we do this because we want to make sure it's breast cancer and not a benign or non-cancerous process. We also want to make sure it's not another primary tumor, like a lung cancer. So it's important whenever possible that areas that look like breast cancer that spread to other parts of the body be biopsied. Not only do we want to confirm that this is actually breast cancer that spread, but we also want to look at the biomarkers or tumor markers, the hormone receptors and the HER2 protein, and also other markers that can help us give you the absolute best, most precise or personalized treatment we can. So a biopsy can help with that. If you want to learn more about those proteins, the hormone receptors, the HER2 protein, or other tumor biomarkers, visit yerba.com. What if we can't do a biopsy of that distant site? Well, if we can't do a biopsy either because it's not safe or because we try to do a biopsy and we can't get any tumor cells, we will treat the distant recurrence as if those cells were cancer, will follow you very closely, and will also use the tumor markers, the hormone receptors or the HER2 protein that were present on the primary tumor. So it's not that all hope is lost, but it is the case that we will use the best evidence we have from the primary tumor to make treatment decisions about treating the distant or metastatic disease. At this point, we can't cure metastatic breast cancer. Some people will have a long-term remission where we can't see the cancer for a while or even as long as we know. I have a patient who's now 30 years out from metastatic disease. While that can be the case, it's much more common that we can't cure metastatic cancer and that you'll be living with metastatic cancer and its treatment for a very long time. Your life expectancy will depend on how soon it's been, how recent it was that your primary tumor was treated, the other treatment you had, how you do and feel and look overall, and also the biomarkers on the tumor, the estrogen, progesterone, and HER2 protein. So it's quite complicated. Every person is different. Be careful not to read a lot of statistics about this. Although it's the case that the average person with metastatic breast cancer will live a couple of years, it's just as often the case that you can live many years. How do people cope with this? It can be very hard, not knowing how you're going to do or what's going to happen. Don't be afraid to ask questions of your medical team. Make sure that you get good support. This doesn't always have to be your family. It might be friends. It might be a support group. Ask to see a social worker if there's one in your practice. Reach out to your community. Make sure you access all the resources, information, emotional, psychological, and spiritual support that you can. Getting scanned often, CAT scans, bone scans, other x-rays, being seen by your doctor, that's a big part of your life. And how do you go about living your life between doctor visits? This is of course going to depend on you, but know that it's normal to want more support than what you had at the time your breast cancer was originally diagnosed. I've learned from my patients that you need a lot of support and you shouldn't be afraid to ask for it. I wish you weren't going through this or that your loved one weren't going through this, but there's a lot of hope. We're making so many advances in breast cancer care. At the same time, it's normal to feel sad and scared and worried. You don't have to hide those feelings. If you want to learn more about your treatment options, visit yerba.com for your personalized yerba report. If this video was helpful to you, click like and don't forget to subscribe.